Hey everyone, in this video, we're looking at how to use ice tables or rice tables to calculate K, the equilibrium constant, and the equilibrium concentrations if we already know some initial values, like the initial concentrations. In the first problem, we'll calculate K, and the second problem, we'll calculate equilibrium concentrations. And the best way to see all this works is to just jump into a problem and see it for yourself. In this first example, like I said, we're calculating K, and here's our reaction. Carbon monoxide gas plus two hydrogen gas in equilibrium with one methanol gas molecule. And so we have a rigid one liter container filled with 0.4 moles of carbon monoxide and one mole of hydrogen gas. At equilibrium, the carbon monoxide concentration is found to be 0.17 molar. What is the value of the equilibrium constant K? So we're trying to solve for K. Now normally, if we knew all of the equilibrium concentrations, we could just write our K expression from our reaction here and substitute those values in and solve for K. But we only know one equilibrium concentration, that's carbon monoxide. We don't know the equilibrium concentrations of hydrogen or methanol, and so we can't just jump to that step. We have to use an ice table in order to get to that step. So here's what we do. We write this out. First, we're gonna have our reaction, and then we'll have our initial concentrations, our change in concentration, and our equilibrium. So we set it up like this, and that's why this is sometimes referred to as an ice table for initial change equilibrium, or rice table if you include reaction in the acronym. So our reaction is this, carbon monoxide, two hydrogen gas, in equilibrium with methanol concentration. Now notice I put this in concentration brackets, because whenever we substitute values in, it's really important that we're using molarities. We're not using just moles, we have to use molarity in these calculations. So let's look through the problem and see what we know. Well, we know initially we have 0.4 moles of carbon monoxide and it's in a one liter container. So 0.4 moles divided by one liter would be 0.4 molarity or 0.4 molar. And we can substitute that in for our initial row. The second thing it says is we have one mole of H2 gas divided by one liter. That would be one molar hydrogen gas. Now the fact that we're starting with the initial is just because that's what it, the problem tells us at the beginning of the problem. In a problem, we could be starting kind of anywhere on this table. It's sort of like a puzzle. We can start anywhere based on what the problem gives us and we'll work with what we got. So not every problem you do is gonna look the same. You won't always fill in this blank right here. Maybe you don't know that blank and you've gotta fill in something else first. So it just depends on the problem and you have to use your problem solving skills a little bit on these. Now it didn't tell us anything about the methanol concentration to start, but it says this container is filled with CO and H2. The fact that it doesn't say that it's filled with methanol implies that there is no methanol to start. We're only starting with reactants here. So we can assume on this that our methanol concentration is just zero. And that's often the case, not always, but often the case in problems that we don't start with any products in the reaction. We'll have products at equilibrium, but oftentimes not at the beginning. The next thing the problem tells us is that equilibrium, the CO concentration is 0.17 molar. So we'll just substitute that in under our equilibrium row right there. Now that's all that the problem tells us. We don't know anything else. Here's where we can look at our table and see if there's anything else that we can calculate from what we know so far. Well, the thing that we can calculate here, if we know how much initial CO we have, and we know how much we have at equilibrium, we can subtract those and find how much was the change. So to calculate the change, I'll take my final, or my equilibrium, 0.17 molar, minus 0.4 molar, and I'll get 0.23 molar, or really negative 0.23 molar. That negative sign just means that that concentration decreased. Now that should make sense in the context of the problem. If we just start with reactants and no products, our reactants are gonna to have to be used up. Some of them will have to be used up and our products would have to increase because we can't have a negative amount of products. So we would expect the change for both carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas in this problem to be negative because we don't have any products to start. The reactants have to be used up, it's a negative change. Once you know one thing in the change row, you can fill in the whole rest of the change row, but you have to follow the coefficients in the balanced reaction. If you notice, for every one carbon monoxide molecule I use up, I'm using up two hydrogen molecules. So if my concentration changes by negative 0.23 molar for carbon monoxide, the change in hydrogen would have to be twice that. Because remember, I'm using up two hydrogens for every one carbon monoxide. So I would multiply that change of negative 0.23 by two, and I would get a change of negative 0.46 molar. So remember, whenever you're filling out the change row, once you know one change, you can follow the coefficients of the balanced reaction in order to fill out the rest of the change row. And then finally, we can do this for methanol. If you look at methanol, it has a coefficient of one, so it should match carbon monoxide, which also has a coefficient of one. But instead of being negative, our methanol will increase, and so we would have a positive 0.23 molar. And these coefficients, like I said, are one to one, but if we follow this here, 
negative 0.23, then here's twice that because of the two, and then here we have 0.23 because of that one coefficient right there. And then we can just add those together in order to find our equilibrium row. So one plus negative 0.46 gives us 0.54 molar, zero plus 0.23 gives us 0.23 molar, and now we know our equilibrium concentrations thanks to our ice table. From there, we just substitute those numbers into our K expression. So let's write that out. Methanol over carbon monoxide times hydrogen squared. Substitute those values in, plug this into the calculator, and then we would get 4.64. That's our equilibrium constant for this reaction at this given temperature. In this second example, we're going to look at how to calculate equilibrium concentrations. So we're going to know our equilibrium constant K, and we're going to know some initial conditions, and we'll be solving for those equilibrium concentrations. Here in our reaction, we have nitrogen plus oxygen gas, and they're reacting together in equilibrium to form nitrogen monoxide. Notice we know our K value, and this is a K sub C, so we use concentrations, not pressures. And initially in a reaction vessel, it contains 0.3 molar N2, the same amount, 0.3 molar oxygen, and we're going to calculate the concentration of each chemical at equilibrium. So we're going to write out our rice table here. And again, we know that we need to use an ice or rice table because we don't know equilibrium concentrations, but we do know some initial concentrations, and so we can use the ice table. So nitrogen plus oxygen gives nitrogen monoxide. Remember, these are all concentrations. This problem gives us everything in molarity, so no conversions needed there. But be careful if it ever gives you like grams or if it gives you moles, then you have to do a conversion to convert to molarity in order to do this. All right, we know 0.3 molar N2, so that's our initial condition. 0.3 molar oxygen, that's also initial. It tells us initial right there. Calculate the concentration, so that's all we know, but the problem doesn't say that there's any nitrogen monoxide, so we can assume that that is zero. Now, here's where we run into a problem. We don't know how much it changes. We don't know any equilibrium concentrations at all. So I can't put in a number right here for how much that is gonna change. Now in math class, anytime you don't know what a value is, you just use a variable, and that's what we're gonna do here. So for a change, we're gonna have minus x for our nitrogen concentration, 0.3 molar minus something. And we're gonna be solving for that x in a little bit. For the oxygen concentration, it's also minus x. That's in a one to one ratio, so they both just have x. But over here for nitrogen monoxide, it's gonna be two, so plus two X. And again, that's plus because if I'm consuming reactants over here, I must be producing products over on this side. Now, if you ever get that wrong and you have positives on the left and a negative on the right, it'll work totally fine. You'll just get a negative value for X, but when you multiply those by negatives, they become positive and it all works out just fine. As long as you're consistent with everything on one side has to be the same sign, for your change, and everything on the other side has to be the opposite sign for your change. So that's the important thing that you get right, is that everything on one side is one sign, everything on the other side is the other sign in that change row. All right, now we'll calculate our equilibrium concentrations, and those will be in terms of x. We don't know the actual numbers just yet. Okay, so that's all that we can do with the ice table at this point. Now we'll go to our k expression. In all of these problems that you might do, there's two tools that you'll use, right? One is your ice table, the other is your K expression. Those are the two things you go to. So do as much as you can in one. And now we're kind of stuck here. There's nothing else to do. So now move to the K expression. So we'll write out our equilibrium expression. And we get this NO squared over nitrogen times oxygen. And we're going to substitute in those values that we got in terms of X into our equilibrium expression down here. So let's go ahead and do that. 0.1 equals, and that 0.1, remember, is our um, equilibrium constant K, and then 2X, now that's gonna get squared, don't forget the squared there, all over 0.3 minus X, and I squared that because in this case, N2 and O2 are the same equilibrium concentrations. That's not always the case, that's just the case in this problem because we have the same starting concentration for each one. Now from here, we gotta solve for X. Now sometimes this is easy, sometimes this is hard. This is an easy one because we don't have to use the quadratic equation or use this other approximation. I'm gonna cover how to use the X's small approximation in the next video. I'll link to that in the description at the end of this video. And that'll be another lesson. But for now, we can solve for this by taking the square root of both sides. That's because on this right side, the numerator and denominator are both squared. So we can take the square root of both sides and it'll work out nice and neat for us. So whenever we take the square root of 0.1, we get 0.316. Take the square root of the other side and those squared exponents just drop away. And then we can go through some algebra and solve for X. So multiply by 0.3 minus X on both sides and we get that equals 2x. Remember, you have to distribute that 0.316 to both of those terms there. That's how we got this on the left. And then we'll add 0.316x on both sides, 
and then divide by 2.316, and we get x equals 0 0.410. Now we're not done. We solved for x, but x doesn't really mean anything to us until we substitute that in and solve for our equilibrium concentrations. So I'm going to take 0.3 minus 0 0.041, and I get 0 0.259 molar. Do that for the other two here. I get 0 0.259 again, and then here I'll take two times that 0 0.041 and I get 0 0.0820. So those are our equilibrium concentrations. Nitrogen and oxygen are both this. Nitrogen monoxide is this concentration, and now I'm done with the problem. So this tells me that at equilibrium, I've actually got quite a bit more nitrogen and oxygen than I do nitrogen monoxide. And that makes sense because my K value is smaller than one. It should favor the reactants. So like I said, these problems are all a little bit different. The information that you're given at the beginning of the problem determines how you go about solving it but always start with an ice table and your K expression. Those are the two tools that you'll use no matter what values they give you. You won't fill in the ice table in the same order each time, and you gotta think logically through where does each value go and what can I solve for in order to get those equilibrium concentrations. Hopefully that was helpful, and whenever you're ready to see the X is small approximation for problems where the math doesn't work out nice and neat and you have a quadratic, check out my next video, and I'll see you there. Thanks.